I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new video. So in today's video, we're going to learn a typical microprogram control unit. One second. Uh, the video before this, we made Wilkie is designed for a microprogram control unit. Yes, that was also a microprogram control unit, but that was Wilkie's design, the proposed method. If you remember, I told you that was made in 1952. It was never physically implemented. It was just a concept, a beautiful concept. I'm sure you enjoyed learning it also. Now what we're seeing is the modern implementation of it. When they ask you in Bombay University, especially when they ask you explain a 10 mark question, explain a microprogram control unit, very likely to come in the exam. Please draw this, not that. If they want Wilkie's design, they'll specifically say explain Wilkie's design because that was just a proposed concept. This is the actual uh, implementation. You understood the concept of a microprogram control unit from that video. Here we are seeing that small drawback. Wilkie's design was beautiful. There's just one small drawback in it, which I told you in that video. So that drawback is rectified over here to make a more refined approach to making a microprogram control unit. So that's what we're going to be seeing in this video. Uh, what do you know? A program is a set of instructions. Every instruction needs a set of micro operations. To perform those micro operations, you need control signals. Those control signals are produced by micro instructions. The set of micro instructions required to produce the control signals for a particular instruction is called the micro program of that instruction. If you've seen the previous video, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, anyway, so uh, that micro program for an instruction is stored in the memory called control memory. It doesn't have micro program for one instruction. It has micro program for every instruction. So this is your control memory. Uh, from here, we'll be fetching micro instructions and producing control signals. Now, now look here. So what do you know? Your program is stored in the memory. When an instruction is fetched, the initial part is the same. When the instruction is fetched, it comes into instruction register, IR. That instruction has an opcode. We use that opcode to identify the address of the first micro instruction. So it all begins from IR. IR will give the address of the first micro instruction, which in Wilkie's design was stored in a register called CMAR that is just now changed with a new name. It's called MuPC. Better name. We know PC contains the address of the next instruction. Mu PC contains the address of the next micro instruction. That's it. So they just gave it a better name instead of CMAR. Anyway, so it's called Mu PC. So here we get the address of the first micro instruction. That address is given to the control memory. From the control memory, we pick up or we fetch a micro instruction and store it into a mu IR. You understand all these names are exactly the same as what you've been seeing with the real memory. PC gives the address of the instruction. We fetch the instruction from the memory, store it into IR. Exactly the same thing. Mu PC gives the address of the micro instruction. We fetch it from the control memory, store it into micro instruction register. So this is your micro instruction. It will have only one field. Again, the diagram is misleading. Don't look at the diagram. Listen to the words I'm saying. The micro instruction will have only one field called control field. It will simply release control signals. That's what you want it to do. There will be no address field. Are you listening? There will be no address field. Once control signals are released, you've just done one micro instruction. Thereafter, the micro program will be executed in a sequential manner. So here we defeat the drawback that was there in Wilkie's design. In Wilkie's design, every micro instruction had to give the address of the next micro instruction. So that cost us a lot of vital memory space in control memory. Now that problem doesn't happen over here. Micro instructions are executed in a sequential manner. That means after one micro instruction, you simply have to go to the next one, which means the address simply has to get incremented. Who will get incremented? PC or mu PC, mu PC, exactly. So once one micro instruction is executed, side by side, mu PC will get incremented. It will now give the address of the next micro instruction. You'll fetch that release control signals. Mu PC will get incremented. This cycle will go on till the time a control signal will end this process. That means this instruction is over. And then we start the next instruction and repeat the whole process. So your answer practically is this, okay? From IR, we get the opcode. It gives the address of the first micro instruction given to mu PC. From there, we go to control memory, fetch the micro instruction. Micro instruction only has a control field. It will release control signals. Side by side, mu PC will get incremented. So your micro program will execute in a sequential manner. Are you clear? It's also called SLM in some textbooks. Straight line micro program. That's the short form SLM. Anyway, so a micro instruction will have only one field, control field. So first up, is this a big improvement from Wilkie's design? Yes. So if there is only control field, what is all this happening? What's all this? Look here. A micro instruction or a micro program will execute in a sequential manner. 
till the time you want to do a jump. If you want to do a jump, you have to give an address. So only when there is a branch, there will be an address. Otherwise, there will be no address. So the only instance when a micro instruction will have an address is when there is a branch. Are you with me so far? So if you're going in a sequential manner, mu PC will get incremented. If there is a branch, there will be a branch address which will be loaded into mu PC so that the micro program can take a branch and go ahead. Are you clear? A branch means a jump. Now, again, the jump can be either unconditional or conditional. If it is unconditional, something like simply a jump, that means you have to jump. So the branch address will be loaded. If it is a conditional jump, something like JC. Now what does JC2000 mean? JC2000 means if there is a carry, jump to 2000. If there is no carry, simply go to 1001. That means simply increment. So again, if there is a branch, what kind of branch? Conditional branch. If it's an unconditional branch, the address will be simply loaded. If it is a conditional branch, then depending upon whether the condition is true or false. If the condition is true, branch address will be loaded. If the condition is false, that means we don't have to jump, new PC will get incremented. So the option is either you load the branch address or you simply increment new PC. Now that will be decided based on the condition. To know whether the condition is true or false, like last time, we have to check the status flag. So all the flags, carry flag, zero flag, blah, 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 all of them give the input to this MUX. What does the MUX do? Selects. Say again, what does the multiplexer do? Select. So depending upon which condition you have written, if you've written JC out of all of them, it will select the carry flag check whether the carry flag is true or false based on that will tell whether it has to load the branch address or simply increment mu pc if it doesn't load branch address by default mu pc was incremented so program will go in the sequential manner so once again normal micro instructions will not have this part at all they will only have a control field and mu pc will simply get incremented and the micro program will execute in a sequential manner if there is a branch it can be of two types, conditional or unconditional. If it's an unconditional branch, unconditionally this branch address will be loaded into mu PC and program will take a jump. If it is a conditional branch, there are two options. If the condition is true, you will load the branch address. If the condition is false, mu PC will be incremented. So we will look at the condition, whether it's JC, JNC, JZ, JNZ, etc. That condition will go and select the particular condition flag, carry flag, zero flag, parity flag, so on. The multiplexer will check that flag input depending upon true or false will tell whether we want to load the branch address. Please be with me. When will you load the branch address? When the condition is true. And if the condition is false, no loading of branch address, mu PC will simply get incremented and program will go in a sequential manner. That's it. So this is the modern implementation of Wilkie or Wilkie's design or of a microprogram control unit. Did you understand how a microprogram control unit works from here? No. That you understood in the previous video where I explained to you Wilkie's design. Here I just made you understand what is the improvement. Instead of that stupid luggage that we were carrying where we were taking the address of the next micro instruction every time, that will not happen. The only time when there will be an address is when there is a branch. Whether conditional or unconditional, there will be only one address. If it's an, un un if it's an unconditional branch, that address will be simply loaded. If it's a conditional branch the condition we checked and the address will be loaded whereas in Wilkie's design every micro instruction had one address and if it's a conditional branch there were two addresses so do you understand so much address overload was happening over here that is avoided in the typical micro program control unit now listen that's it so that's your idea of micro program control unit if they ask you micro program control unit please draw this one this is what they want if you have the time draw that also if you want to impress the examiner and say i know everything but anyway but this is what they want now listen listen the next topic if i get the chance i'll make a video for it but it's too simple and it's too uh, repetitive that's why i'm not making a video the next topic is called micro instruction sequencing Micro instruction sequencing decides again the same thing, whether micro instruction will execute in a sequential manner or whether they will be non-sequential where you have to give the address every time. If they are non-sequential, you will have to have one address all the time and if it's a conditional jump, you'll have to have two addresses. That's why it's called dual address field instructions. If they are sequential, most of the times there will be no address. If there is a branch, there will be an address. Whether conditional or unconditional, there will be only one address. 
if an unconditional that address will be loaded if conditional and true that address will be loaded if conditional and false new pc will be incremented that means the instruction will have only one address so that's why it's called single address field so there's something called dual address field and single address field that is what is explained when you get a question explain micro instruction sequencing in other words it's just a comparison of these two diagrams again i in the pdf of this video i will give those two topics also uh, Trust me when I'm saying this, even when you just read it by yourself, you'll understand it. If I get the chance, I'll make a video for it. But there are so many important topics that I want to cover first in making videos than spending time on something which I've already explained because to make one video and edit and upload is a huge process. So I would rather do it for the important topics first. So I'm giving those two answers in PDF and as a promise, yes, I will make a video for them, but that is not top priority for me. There are other important videos that I would want to like micro instruction for at horizontal vertical nano program programming i would want to make a video of that first rather than making this so i'll be giving this as a pdf along with this i would request you just go through that you'll understand it by yourself that's my word just go through it you'll understand it by yourself if you understood wilkie's design and this you'll understand those two by yourself automatically okay so check them out in the pdf wish you all the best do well